Um, I would like to invite you now to continue our journey. Uh, and we will go through looking into future proofing your business with artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm proud to invite here Alexander De Reeder, who is the CTO and co-founder at Smith OS, to be sharing a lot of very exciting and cool stuff with us. So Alexander, please join us. All right. Everyone can hear us well? How was the food? Good, right? Okay. So after yesterday's announcement from OpenAI, I think I should start by saying, hey, but that's an inside joke. Maybe you'll get it online. <laughs> now, it's always fun to be on stage right after. And I'll need a clicker if somebody can bring me a clicker for the presentations. But it's always fun to join the stage after lunch. <laughs> you know, half of our energy. Oh, right there. Great. So half of our energy is used for digestion, and the other half is used for, you know, paying attention. <laughs> But it will be great. Today we're going to talk about the AI revolution. But before we do, I want us to just take a moment and look around in this room. Take in this building. Take a look at this beautiful woodwork, at this history. You know, I met one of the servers who brought us the food, along with a lot of other people of the staff here. His name is Craig. And he told me he had been working here for 27 years. And when I asked him, you know, can I talk about you? He said, well, there's people who have been working here for 40 years. Now, that's a long time. And this is a place of history. Did you know that in, in this building, perhaps on this stage, well, not not this, this stage, but this room, we had Eleanor Roosevelt. We had President Obama. Did you know that in the room next to us, there is a, um, a, a, a cabinet with books, yearbooks, going back to, well, what I saw, 1905 yearbooks of people who have been here, who have made history. And when you look up in the, in, the, in the hallway, you see the stairs. What is there? There is a clock. When you look behind you, there's a clock right there. Now, in every other building you'd go, that clock will be having the wrong time. <laughs> but not in the Harvard Club. <laughs> because they keep track of time. They cherish time. And so, as we're thinking about fast-forwarding through our revolution and building the revolution, you cannot divorce that from the idea of time and what a time it is to be alive. <laughs> That's another inside joke for uh, those who watch a lot of YouTube videos on AI. Hey, <laughs> got you there. <laughs> so let's think about what kind of future we can create together. Imagine finally curing cancer. Imagine finally curing Alzheimer's disease and other ailments that have plagued us for all of human history. This technology now allows us to go there, to dream of this. It is within reach. Food security, education. We can imagine every child having a personal private tutor maybe even an MIT or Harvard one. And let's also think about breakthroughs in energy and how we can think about our relationship with this planet. Now, as we understand, AI is a technology that is so revolutionary that it has the potential to affect every single thing we are doing. And here today, we are in a room with innovators, amazing companies that are all helping in their own way 
to bring that future here. And we have a shared responsibility, a partnership, to help make that future a reality. Because it is so important we get this right. And one thing I'm very important, it's very important to me and very passionate about, I want us to move to a world where we do not have to do the mundane work. Yes, I know you love spreadsheets. But imagine you could practice soul craft, truly enrich your soul with the work you do. Wake up every morning and be excited about what the future brings. Many of us have this opportunity, and we're here for that, right? But many in the world do not. And also, we can create that together. This is our shared future, and it is our responsibility. Now, change is not easy, but nature prepares us for change. We have seasons, not so much in Houston. It's more like two seasons. Hot and hotter, that would be Phoenix. But change is important and constant. And so going back to this building, how much change has walked through these rooms? How much change has the world experienced, thanks to some of the people who brought the change into the world. Today, all of you are part of that change. Today, all of you listening online are part of that change. And we have the opportunity to change the future. Now, we have seen the dawn of AI models. There's lots of them. There's really awesome ones. There's really specialized ones. There's models for text, there's models for images, there's models for videos. And when we see them, we're like a child, excited. It is like being a child again every day, isn't it? Waking up with excitement. Now, we are talking about AI agents. AI agents, what is the difference with AI agents and AI models? Well, the word says it, agency. We have hands. We can move around. We can do things. We can use tools. AI agents is how AI models get integrated in our workflows, how they connect to our software, how they connect to our data, how they can automate and collaborate with us. And it is a new way to design code, it is a new way to design solutions. And it is really exciting. But that's not where it's going to stop, because right after that comes multi-agent systems, teams of agents. And yes, we are going to have personal assistance, a, a chief of staff for you, a personal assistant for you, one for you, for everyone in this room, for everyone in your organization, entire teams that can help you achieve things. Three people with the power of 100 AI agents helping them achieve their dreams. But in that future, alignment is very important. Alignment means that you get it to do what is important, what you need it to do. And so, we all know AI is non-deterministic. It kind of has a way to sometimes not be ones and zeros, but some value in between. And so alignment is challenging. But alignment is where technology and people match. Because we have a responsibility as humans to make sure the AI does what we need it to do. It needs to follow our processes. We need to think about how the data integrates and what is allowed, where it's allowed to flow. So we are thinking about how technology meets people. And at the Air Group, we have several amazing companies who are experts. Salesforce, Adobe, Oracle, AWS, SEO, and fundamental engineering. P 
people. But people meeting technology together, we can solve things that are exciting, that bring the future closer to us. So, if we want to make that happen, we need to bring together any AI model, any API, any data source, and any process. And because it needs to be human supervised, we need to understand what is happening so that if Craig comes and looks at what we're doing, he can understand it and he can explain it. It is only when it is that easy that we can trust it. We've all heard of the black box problem. What happens inside the black box? How did AI make that decision? Why did it do that? And what did it do with my data? I'm not ready to hand the keys over to an AI and let it run my business. I want to know what's happening. So it needs to be fully visual. And we have at the Air Group, we have this technology to empower you to do this. We can create automated visual interfaces. We can do this without writing code. And when we need to write code, we have amazing technologies, people, AI cockpit. We think about security from the ground up. We call this constrained alignment, how we air gap components to protect your data. And we can deploy these agents with one click wherever you work. All of this 90% faster than we could create AI agents any time before. I want to play a very short clip. Did you like that? <laughs> the future of engineering is not 100,000 lines of code that nobody understands. It is visual. It is human collaborative. And the agents that it creates work alongside your team where they already work with the tools your team already is using. And so we have created a library of pre-built agents to accelerate development in your industry. And this library is always growing. We have built multi-agent collaboration so that these agents can work together and solve complex problems. We have even give them, given them work schedules. <laughs> you can deploy these agents anywhere your organization has their cloud. And the agents are fully open API compliant meaning they plug and play into your existing systems. And building is also important to involve your team, not just one person, but your entire team can contribute to this. All of this comes with over 300,000 integrations. And this library is growing all the time. But in all of this, we could not do it without our partners. And partnership partners are really important to us. We think of our integration partners. We think of our cloud and infrastructure providers, partners. And we think about our partners in different verticals. And we have the opportunity at the Air Group to work with phenomenal companies and partners. And to that, I want to invite Troy on stage. Troy, come here, buddy. <laughs> Welcome him. Hi, thanks. So, 
Troy O'Brien, what company do you represent? So I work for uh, AI21 Labs, as it says there. Okay, what is an A21 Labs? AI21 Labs uh, was founded in 2017. We're um, a startup headquartered out of Israel. We, bu we build large, large language models and AI systems for enterprises. So, I've been working in AI for a while, and man, they had some killer Google Chrome extension for rewriting text. I admired how simple it was and how powerful it was. And they have been building models for a while. My first encounter was with your Jurassic model. And at the time, it was you know, before everyone was using ChatGPT. You've been at this for a while now. What have you been doing since then? Yeah, um, so like I said, we were um, uh, formed in 2017 and developed this application called WordTune. It has uh, over 10 million current active users globally. It's a reading writing assistant. Got a lot of feedback from the users on how can we use this technology for business. And so WordTune is built on these AI systems or what we call task-specific models. They're derivatives of our foundation models that do a, a simple task or a specific task really well. So grounded, reliable, very cost effective. Um, and again, enterprises love uh, this approach. But you asked me about what we're doing now. Yeah, what are you doing now? So thank you. Um, There's the camera, tell the world. <laughs> yeah, so on March 28th, we released a base model called Jamba. It's the first production grade um, hybrid architecture, uh, novel architecture, um, LLM. And what's uh, super exciting about this, why we're, we're um, to use a California term, stoked about uh, this model, is it, it, we went out to solve the problem with transformers. So for, for those that don't know, um, just about every model today is built on a transformer architecture. Um, very great output, unfortunately, huge consumer of memory. Um, and as context length grows, the context or, or the uh, throughput just bogs down. In December of last year, Carnegie Mellon and Princeton University collaborated on a new architecture to solve the context and the memory problem. And they released an architecture called Mamba. So what our team did, and, and we're successful at doing, is integrating uh, the transformer architecture with the Mamba tech, uh, architecture and mixture of experts into various layers within the model to get the best of both worlds. So you have the um, incredible output of, of the, these transformer models. They just perform uh, extremely well, but you get low um, memory footprint and extremely high throughput. So in its class, the largest context length um, of any model. And um, we built this on purpose to fit on a single GPU. So that base model was released. Uh, thank you, I love the CTOs clapping. Um, that was released in, uh, at the end of March, and on May 2nd, um, after some additional um, uh, alignment and training, we released the uh, commercially ready um, Instruct model. And hopefully in a few weeks, it will be available on Bedrock um, and our other partners. Well, that was a lot. <laughs> so, who knows what mixture of experts stands for? thought so. This room is a mixture of experts. You're all experts in your area, in your field, right? Mixture of experts is when we collaborate, when we work together. Now, some very smart people who work on AI foundation models learn that you can make AI collaborate with a mixture of experts. And what you were talking about is very interesting, context length. Now, we talk about context length, again, a technical term. I think a bit more here understand what we're talking about. 
But why is it important? Well, it opens up uh, use cases, right, that um, uh, enterprises are very excited about. Um, think about these, these long documents, these, these extremely long documents that instead of chunking them up or breaking them down, you can just feed it into the model, uh, you know, and um, uh, customers are very excited about yeah. that c capability. So AI models are a lot like uh, teenagers right now. Um, I have a teenager. I saw a few of you have children in school when hands were raised earlier, right? They have a short memory. Very short. <laughs> you have to repeat things a lot. Large context windows. Yeah, and uh, so yes, the, the problem with Mamba is with that longer context, it doesn't have that uh, recall ability. And so with that mixture, with the, the um, transformer and, and Mamba, we retain that ability to recall so that it remembers what you told it in the first set of inputs in that string of context and can recall that and, and act on it. Yeah, absolutely. So who here agrees that memory is important? Right? OK, OK. Um, I think it's important too. Now, memory is not the only thing that's important. I've read some article, I've not verified this, but they say that to train some of these state-of-the-art AI models and serve them, you need like a small nuclear plant. That's a lot of energy, right? You can provide a lot of energy to people. And we have to think about our responsibility as we are creating these technologies. We have we have an impact on the environment, right? We're all excited about progress, right? But these technologies have an environmental impact. How does that play a role in your philosophy when you're thinking about fitting a model on a single GPU, reducing its footprint? Well, I mean, just to your point, right? Um, we, we, we think about it in simple terms, cost. The more compute, the more GPUs you have, the more it's going to cost you to, um, for inference. To be able to do that on a single GPU reduces the environmental impact, reduces the cost, and it's still performant. And, and, um, and, and that's why we're super excited about it. Yeah, and you know, this is really important work. And we have in our audience, we have our sponsors for today's event. Will the Amazon people like raise their hand? <laughs> we have some there, some there. Thank you for sponsoring this event and thank you for being such a great partner. You know, Amazon has an interesting approach when it comes to AI models. And um, I understand you have worked with Amazon. Uh, what has that partnership been like for you? Yeah, so... Um we, we have the same philosophy. I mean, if you look at our CEOs, we have two CEOs, co-CEOs, and um, they're out and about talking a lot. And they will say within the first three minutes of their speech, there's not one model to rule them all, right? There are models that are built for particular tasks or use cases that perform better than others. We are a text-based uh, model provider. We don't do, you know, video images. So seven rings of power. Yes, we do have that Lord <laughs> of the Rings um, okay. picture that we use internally quite a bit. Um, so no one model to rule them all. And AWS is great because they want to give customers choice. Yes. Uh, which was brilliant with the formation of Bedrock. We were a launch partner, one of the um, few model providers that were on Bedrock once it was released to GA. Um, and, and they're giving customers choice, which is very important today. Yeah, and, and also, so that choice and no one model to rule them all, this is where we get into the idea of orchestration, right? Uh, an analogy I use, if anyone has listened to my podcasts, I apologize, I repeat this one a few times. But you do not want to mow your grass with a bazooka. The grass will be gone, but so will other things. You don't want that. You need to use the right model for the right task. AWS with Bedrock is providing right models for the right task. 
So I understand that you want to orchestrate the right model for the right task, for your efficiency, but also for responsibility. We have a responsibility to this planet. We think about energy use. So tell me a little bit more about the models that you're currently working on and, and, and what they're good at. Like, why should somebody use those models specifically? Um, so where do I start, and how much time do we have? <clears throat> so we're on, and I'm assuming um, some of these terminologies that I'm going to use are, are well known, right? So we have Bedrock, which is the managed service, uh, managed service platform, uh, and then SageMaker Jumpstart, which is more of a you know build mindset, builder mindset. So easy button for Bedrock. Uh, the buyer, and then the builder with SageMaker. So currently we have our task-specific models um, available via SageMaker. And uh, things like contextual answers, summarization, conversation uh, summarization, grammatical error correction. Not the sexiest of use cases, but when you look at what enterprises are trying to do, this is the vast majority of, of these initial use cases. So um, we are there. Our um, foundation models are available on SageMaker and Bedrock. Um, Jamba, within a few weeks, will be on Bedrock. Um, you'll see a big announcement about that. Uh, and our base model will be served via SageMaker uh, as soon as we get it into a TJI yeah. container. But it's on Hugging Face. Um, so You're that's hearing it. You're hearing a lot of news here. <laughs> and, and more um, excitedly, if that's a proper word, is um, uh, so Jamba is in total 58 billion parameter model, but only has 12 billion active parameters. So it's a it's in a kind of mid to smaller size um, foundation model. We are currently training our replacement for our Ultra, which is our largest model. Very excited! It'll be built on the same technology as Jamba, uh, and Going back to the base model that was released, the open source model, we did that. Um, specifically, we released it to the developer community because it's new, it's new technology, right? I mean, nobody has ever taken this type of architecture to production. So we are looking for feedback on pushing the limits of what this architecture can do, and we're getting great feedback. And, and now we have completely revamped what we're doing, and Moving forward, our models are going to be built on this technology, this architecture. And uh, you know, if you think like 256K context window, it was trained on million uh, length context window, but you know, we're not really talking about that right now. And that's at 12 billion parameters. So can you imagine what a very large model can do? Yeah. We're pretty excited about it. Well, I'm excited too. And um, I know Amazon is also working on Amazon Q. Uh, do you have any interaction with that product at all? Um, personally, don't. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, talking to customers, you know, AWS has released a bunch of new services uh, recently. Um, Q is fascinating. I'm keeping my eye on it just to see, um, you know, where it's used, how it's used, and what we can learn from it. Um, and uh, I think, at least from a customer perspective, this bring your own model to Bedrock is the one that is really gaining traction and, and, and is super exciting for our customers. Right. Yeah, I'm particularly excited, excited to see that all of our insights, all our data that's just like buried there can now be brought to the surface and become conversational, be actually actionable. And, and, and really do that from a, um, a, a distributed uh, point of view. So not one model to rule them all, but many models to orchestrate. And so when we're talking about orchestration, right, we need orchestration technology. We need a way to bring together these different models. We need a way to bring together your data, your connection points. And when you combine people, great people, and great problems and great technologies, we can bring that future 
closer. And so we are standing here today in a room where history was made. And we're all here part of history. We're witnessing history. And you're making history with new architectures. And so we're all contributing our little piece. But I would say this responsibility of to bring about this future that we all want with AI is not with one company or foundation mo model company or with a large cloud provider. It is with all of us. And so we are looking to the future hopeful that maybe in a hundred years, people will also remember this group of people that came together and brought this AI future, this revolution, fast forward. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks a lot, Alexander. Thank you.